zucchini. It's the butt of a lot of gardener jokes. Um, everybody always teases about having so much zucchini that they leave it on their neighbor's porch and hide out trying to give it to people and nobody wants the zucchini because there's too much of it. I wish we had the problem. This is the vine that I pulled out of the plant. It has the squash vine bore damage. I don't know if you can see that. But it starts traveling. Let's see, make sure it's focusing here. It starts traveling up through the plant and there is a little larva worm and I'll show you better pictures of it. But basically it goes up the hollow core of that plant and it, here, here's one right now. Can you see the little worm? Let's see if you can come out here. There they are. They're working up inside of that. Now, once the plant gets torn like this, it's just, there's no saving it. I mean, I've tried. They say you can cut into the plant and you can do all kinds of things to, you know, get rid of these worms. But really, you cut into the plant, it's already got damage. It's just destroyed. So the best thing that you can do at this point is you pull it out. You need to try to destroy these little beggars as soon as possible. Now, basically, this plant was blooming, ready to produce, and now it's gone. And that's I just wasted just the whole seed, the season, the time. Lots of different things. Like I said, I've tried to split them open. I've tried to put foil around the base so that the bugs don't lay their eggs. I've tried to put Vaseline on the squash bottoms to keep the squash from laying their eggs. This is a squash vine for pheromone trap. Um, I will put links in the description as to where I bought this. It seems to be working. The trap works like this inside of the top of this there's a little rubber piece. This contains the pheromones or the hormones that simulate the breeding um, lar or breeding moth and it clips down into the container like that. I had never heard of these things before 
but catching the adults before they lay their eggs is really about the only method you've got. Um, I'm going to show you the inside of it if you can see it. I'll try to get a good picture of it here. I'm not a very good camera person sometimes. But there's how the pheromone sits in there. And then of course you've got your basic funnel trap. And inside the funnel trap you have water and it says that you can put they give you an insecticide strip but I don't want to use insecticides as much as possible so I am using a homemade Castile soap chip basically just a little chunk in the water to um, let the insects die so they don't come out and I'm going to try to open this up so that's what we're catching so far and the moth in question that we're after is, as you see, we're catching several different kinds of insects. But this, right there, is the adult moth after it's been trapped, captured, and it's gone into the soap water solution and died. Um, here's another one. This is a newer one. Easier to see because it's not as decomposed. But you can see they almost look like a wasp. They're pretty large little guys, and the so far the trap is working. It's catching them. Um, I've also caught June bugs, and I've also caught, I've noticed down in there before, I haven't seen any right today, in the mess, because they're, like I said, they're, they're starting to decompose in that soapy water solution, which is fine with me. But um, I've also caught some Japanese beetles in the same trap. So it's been a win, 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 as far as I'm concerned. It's all baited back up and ready to go. Um, the Jap these traps are supposed to call in pests for miles. Now, as soon as the spring frost is over, when normal people would be planting their plants, I'm going to put this out. Some types of squash are more susceptible to the boar. Um, Hubbard squash, zucchini, soft-bodied squash, summer squash like that, they seem to be the favorites. Um, hard squash, like butternut, are supposed to be more resistant because they've got a real tough stem and it's harder for the larva to go through them and get them. But guess what? past I have done videos on having trouble with my zucchini and this year I planted some rampicotti which is an Italian zucchini and it's a climber and it has a solid stem so we don't get the squash vine borers and I wanted to take this opportunity to show you how that zucchini doth grow. Let's come up, 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 up. I have tomatoes planted here on this side and my rattlesnake beans, which are a wonderful snap bean if you've never had them, are on this side, green beans. And I planted the zucchini in the middle of this and it has started to climb up these trellises and has it been producing oh my you see right there one of the little zucchinis I just wanted to show you here are two of them. And then, yesterday when I was picking green beans, I noticed this little feller. Do you see this? <laughs> I think that this thing is like, well, I will measure it and tell you exactly how long it is. But I think it's taller than my grandson. And I'm going to have him come out here and pick it in a little bit. But I wanted to get a little bit of video. Got some more here. See him? Look at 
like I said, I've already picked four or five smaller ones off of this thing. But this one is a doozy. I see. Do you see? Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't want you cooking in the tomato vine.